Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of another affordable broadcast dynamic microphone. That microphone being the brand new Audio-Technica AT2040, which is a hypercardioid dynamic microphone. If you are interested in this mic, it will only cost you around $100. Like always, I will throw some affiliate links in the description down below. For this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at around 4 o'clock. I'm recording at 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. But I'm taking it easy this week because after last week, the doctor said I need a bacchiotomy. So let's talk about what comes in the box. What a shocker, you are going to get the microphone. It comes with this already installed mount. You'll also get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a padded storage pouch, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels absolutely outstanding. It has an all metal body, which feels very robust. The metal mesh grill has no give to it at all. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. The mounting system that is previously installed is made out of plastic in case that matters to you. On the rear of the microphone, you will find the XLR port and this microphone is made in Taiwan. Then, as far as the specs of this microphone, it has a hypercardioid polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 80 hertz to 16 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 53 dB, and an impedance of 600 ohms. Now, I am spinning around the AT2040 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around to around 150 degrees. This should be the deadest area on the microphone, continuing around to the rear of the mic, then continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree area, and then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's see how well the microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches away from the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you elite gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And just so you can see the microphone, there it is right there. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Next, to see how well the microphone isolates itself, I will go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And I'll tap on the boom arm. And now, in order to be extremely annoying, I will go ahead and tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now we're going to do a quick comparison between the 2040 and a bunch of other broadcast dynamic microphones that are available on the market. We're not doing all broadcast dynamics, but we're doing a fair number. So grab some popcorn and buckle up because we're going to be here for a while. Like always, we'll start on the mic that we're reviewing. This is the 2040, three inches off, gain set at four o'clock, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the first mic. First up, we are on the Zoom ZDM1. This is an $80 microphone. I am three inches off. Gain is still set at four o'clock. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these microphones in post. And let's jump back to the Audio Technica and do some more comparisons. Again, we're back on the Audio Technica AT2040, affordable broadcast dynamic microphone. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to the second mic. 
Now we are on a handheld dynamic microphone, but one of my favorites, this is the SE Electronics SEV7, $100, so the same price as the AT2040, same distance, same gain setting, check the lower third, and let's do some more comparisons. Back again on the 2040, so you can hear how I sound in between each and every one of these microphones. Here's how it sounds, same distance, same gain setting, next microphone. Now we are on an industry classic, an industry standard, the Shure SM57. This is another $100 dynamic microphone. This is an instrument dynamic microphone. I am three inches off. Gain is still set at four o'clock. Check the lower third and here's how it compares industry standard versus the new kid on the block. Does it stand up? Does it compare well? You tell me. Let's do some more of these. AT2040 again, just very quickly so you can hear how I sound on this before we jump to this next mic. Now we are on the Audio-Technica's direct competitor. This is the Rode Pod Mic, another broadcast dynamic microphone that costs $100. I am three inches off of this thing. Gain is still set at four o'clock. And here is how it compares. Which one do you like the sound of better? The AT2040? or the Rode pod mic? Let me know in the comments down below, and let's jump back to the Audio-Technica now. All right, we are back on the 2040 again. Are you surprised? You ought not be, but here we are. This is the fifth comparison. Let's jump to that fifth mic. Now I am on another direct competitor to the Audio-Technica. This is the Personas PD70, another relatively affordable broadcast dynamic mic. This costs $130. I am about three inches off the end of this microphone's body or grill. My gain is still set at four o'clock, and here is how it compares. Let's do more of these. We're not done. We're not even close to done. We're not even half done. Back to the Audio-Technica. Here we are again on the AT2040, three inches off, gain set at four o'clock, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump to the next mic. Next, I am on the Sontronics Podcast Pro. This is a $150 broadcast dynamic microphone. I am three inches off. My gain is still set at four o'clock. And check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these because this is significantly hotter than the other. So just so you know how much I'm boosting it, check the lower third. Let's do more comparisons. Here we are again, AT2040. Here is how it sounds. Nothing has changed. Let's do another comparison. Next, we are on a very popular broadcast dynamic microphone. This is the Rode Procaster. This costs around $230, and I am three inches off. My gain is set at four o'clock. Check the lower third. I will have to boost this a bit more in post, and let's do more comparisons. You wouldn't believe it, but we're back on the Audio-Technica AT2040, and nothing has changed. Can you believe it? Maybe you can't, but it's true. And here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the next mic. Now we are on the 2040's big brother. This is the BP40, which I believe is Audio-Technica's flagship broadcast dynamic microphone. I do not have the filter engaged. I am three inches off. My gain is at four o'clock still. And here is how it compares. Let's jump back to the microphone. Oh, this costs 350 bucks. Let's jump back to the $100 version and do more tests. All right, we're getting near the end, I think, and I hope. This is the AT2040. Again, three inches off, gain set at four o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. And let's jump to the next mic. Now I'm on the SM7B. This costs $400. I am about three inches away from the end of the capsule. I am in flat mode. I do not have the high pass filter or the presence boost engaged. And here is how it sounds. I did increase my gain to 100% because this is a very quiet microphone. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it in post. And let's jump back to the Audio-Technica and do some more comparisons. All right, here we are again on the Audio-Technica AT2040. We are getting very near the end. You might think, what's more expensive than the SM7B? Well, I have a couple more for you. Next, we are on the Electro Voice RE20, another one of the most famous broadcast dynamic microphones. This costs 
around $450. I am three inches off. My gain is at four o'clock again. And here is how this sounds. Let's jump back to the Audio Technica and we have a couple more to go. I bet you wouldn't believe that we have even more expensive microphones than the RE20, but we do. But we are currently on the AT2040. I forgot what we were doing. Here's how it sounds. Let's jump to the next microphone. Now we are on the Neumann BCM705. This is Neumann's only dynamic microphone, and this costs $700. I am three inches off of this thing. My gain is set at around four o'clock. And this is another very mid-forward sounding broadcast dynamic. And there you go. $700 versus $100. Do you hear $600 better sound out of the Neumann versus the AT2040? You tell me. Let's jump back to the Audio-Technica and we have one more to go. There's a $700 Neumann broadcast dynamic mic that we just compared it against. That's right. And we're not done yet. You all know what this last microphone is going to be. Enjoy it. Let's do it right now. And here we are. I knew it was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. And we are all thrilled that it is currently happening. Can you tell by the tone of my voice and the look on my face? We are on, <laughs> we're on the Neumann U87 AI. This is a $3,600 multi-pattern condenser microphone. 48 volts on, gain at 11 o'clock. Cardioid mode, no high-pass filter, no no pads, nothing engaged, and here is how it sounds. I'm never going to stop this, but let me know which of these microphones did you like the sound of the best? Do you think the 2040 stacks up against the competition well, or do you think something else that I have demonstrated outperforms it? Let me know in the comments down below, and let's jump to the music test. <laughs> Broadcast dynamic microphones We all need them in our homes But I don't know what they are At all, let's find out Yeah, I'm still not, not, not quite sure What the definition of a broadcast dynamic microphone is We do know that the definition of an idiot Is right here though, because I cannot speak all right, I am really glad that we're starting to see more and more microphones at this price point that seem to be competing for the podcaster, YouTuber, and streamer market. And first up in terms of pros, I hate the fact that I am including this, but I know it matters to a lot of people. It's a good looking microphone. So if you have a video component to your podcast or you stream or you make YouTube videos and you care about that, it's a good looking microphone. Also in the grand scheme of things, the microphone is pretty darn effective at plosive rejection. And when I used it in an untreated room, it did a respectable job at rejecting unwanted room tone. But then as far as cons, the provided microphone mount does not do a good job at shock absorption. So you will either need to be very careful with how you handle the boom arm or if you bump your desk, or you will need to invest additional money in a shock mount. And also, I think the off-axis coloration on this thing is pretty terrible. So if you anticipate having any sound making it into the side of this microphone, this that sound is going to be bad. Just keep that in mind. And now as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone, on the electric guitar, if you are looking for a bunch of presents and high mids, you're getting it because that's what this microphone is dropping. So if that's what you're trying to pick up, more power to you. The low end is also controlled because the mic has essentially a 100 hertz high pass filter. But then when you get to the upper register of the guitar and just the top end in general, it did start to get a little bit piercing and unpleasant. 
Then on the acoustic guitar, it seems to lack any kind of heft or body or weight to it. It just sounds a bit hollow down there. I wasn't a big fan of that. And then when you get to the midsection, it is overboosted and artificial sounding, and it really dominates the entire sound of the acoustic guitar. You can't even focus on the treble or air because it's just dominated by the midsection. So I did not like it on the acoustic. Next up for singing, the low end actually seems to work really well on this thing because as I mentioned, it essentially has a 100 hertz high pass filter. So you're not gonna have any unnecessary frequencies down there. It's not gonna sound muddy or boomy or anything like that. But then you get to the midsection and it starts to sound a bit nasally and also artificial and over boosted. So for singing, I was not the biggest fan of it for that application. And lastly, for spoken word, the microphone doesn't offer a very powerful low end. So if that's something you're looking for, you're going to have to look somewhere else. But when we do compare it to other dynamic microphones, it offers a relatively open sound, which was a bit shocking to me. It sounds a bit more open in the top end than I was expecting. But simultaneously, you're also starting to get this mid forward sound that comes across a touch artificial. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Audio-Technica AT2040? Maybe and kind of. If you don't care how the microphone looks and you are focused solely on the sound, I do think there are better options at this price point, mainly something like the SE Electronics SEV7. I just think it sounds better. That's my personal preference though. However, if you do care about the look of the microphone and you want a mic that looks like a broadcast dynamic, then I think you have a couple of good options at this price point. The AT2040, the Rode Pod mic, or the Zoom ZDM1, all of which have quite different sound profiles to it. So if you're looking for a more broadcasty, dynamic looking microphone at around $100, and you do prefer that more mid-forward sound when you compare it against the ZDM-1 and the Rode Pod mic, then I absolutely would recommend it because it does that, it does it well, and it does it for an affordable price. And that's going to wrap up for today, but like always, I want to pass the question off to you. Which of the microphones in this video was your favorite? Do you think the AT2040 did a good job? Do you think it's stealing the market around 100 bucks? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, subscribe, click that logo down beneath me, and also hit that bell icon, get notified of everything that I'm doing and publishing and all that stuff. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, go to podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.